In this lesson, I'm going to walk you through the export process. I'm going to explain how you can export an entire sequence or part of a sequence, a clip from the project panel, or a trimmed clip from the program monitor. So to follow along, go to Working Files and go to Projects and scroll on down and open up 2103 Export Sequences Assets. First of all, let's export a sequence. Now, when you export a sequence, you can choose to export the entire sequence or whatever's under the work area bar. This is the work area bar. You can change it to, let's say, just this part of the sequence or just this area there. Notice how it snaps, a little black line, so you can select clips like that. So you could just export this part of the sequence like that if you want to. To export a sequence, you need to make the sequence active. It has to have the little orange line around it. If you go over here and click on that and go then File, Export, you're going to see just big blanks there. So let's make the sequence active and then go to File, Export Media. That opens up the Export Settings dialog box. You have a choice here to export the work area or the entire sequence like that. So we'll do the entire sequence, all 34 seconds of it. Then you choose a format. What I want to do now is I want to choose, let's say, H.264. That's probably the most common format. Then once you choose the format, you choose a preset. And there are dozens of presets here. So I'm going to go down and choose the high definition preset that basically matches our assets. So HD 1080p 2997. There you go. Once I do that, you can see the output here. It's going to be 1920 by 1080 2997 progressive, which is what we have here. VBR, which means variable bitrate. That's actually a better way to compress than constant bitrate. And one pass. You can do two passes. The target is 32 megabits per second, max 40. That's a pretty high bitrate. That's a very high quality file there. The audio is AAC, which is a type of audio format, 192 kilobits per second, and it's a 48,000 samples per second in stereo. So those are all the details. You need to select an output name and location. So just click on this and that'll open up the dialog box. In our case, we're going to go to desktop, my Premiere Pro exercise files and choose that folder and then give it a name. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it Export Sequence 1 there. Click Save. Now, nothing's going to happen when you click Save. You're just saying, this is where I want to put it, and this is what I'm going to call it. Now, if you want to change the format, if you want to change the preset or customize it, you can. You can get onto these tabs here. You might typically choose between video and audio. So for video, you can just scroll through these things and see what the options are in terms of the frame rate and the resolution, things like that. You probably wouldn't change these because that's what we just selected. But let's move on down farther here. You can have the variable bitrate. You can have a one pass or two passes. Two passes will create a higher quality looking video. You can change the target bit rates to something more or less than that. You can also go to audio. Not many choices here because you can't choose anything other than AAC. You can choose various flavors of AAC, but it's all going to be AAC there. You can change other things here, but we probably want to keep it high quality like that. You can change the bit rate to something higher than 192 if you really want to ramp up the bit rate. So if you make changes, let's just say I go here to variable bitrate to two passes instead of one, then this will say custom up here. And once it says that, you can save this preset if you want, just by clicking on this button there. We could call it VBR2 or something like that. And if we save that, then it'll show up in the presets for H.264, not for other formats. So if I go back here, you'll see VBR2 right there. So we'll keep it there for the time being. Notice as we do this, we can see the estimated file size down here. If I chose a lower bit rate, for example, way down here, then it would recalculate that to be much less than that. I'm going to go back to my preset, though. There we go. And that takes it back to 130 megabytes. Now I can click Export, and that'll immediately start transcoding this and turning it into an H.264 MP4 file. Or I can click Q. And clicking Q opens up the Adobe Media Encoder and puts it in the queue. There it is in the queue. Now I can just minimize this. We'll come back to this guy later. All right, let's talk about exporting a clip. I'm going to go over here and select a clip. Let's say Bike Riding 3 there. And now that the project panel is active and a clip is selected, if I go File, Export, Media, it'll say Entire Clip down here instead of Sequence. Now we can pick a different format, let's say. Let's go up here and click MOV, just so we get some uh, variability here. Click on QuickTime, which is an MOV file. You see right there. We could select the preset, but there aren't very many presets. It's easier to go down and select the codec. So I'm going to go down here and select the codec. We could select H.264, but let's do Motion JPEG. Motion JPEG is a pretty high quality video file. And then we can look at its settings too. It's AAC as well, and it's 1920, 1080, 2997, etc. If you go down through here, you can see that there are some changes you can make to the quality settings as well, just as you did with H.264. Audio has a few more options here. You don't have to choose just AAC. You can choose some other ones, but we'll go with that one. 
If the name is what you want, there's no need to click here unless you want to put it in a different folder. It's going to automatically go in the last folder you selected. If I click on that, you'll see that it's going to go inside the Exercise Files folder there. We can click Export to have it exported immediately, but we'll click Q to add that to our queue. And the media encoder doesn't appear now, but if you take a look at it, you'll see that it's been added to the queue as well. Minimize that. Let's add a clip to the source monitor. I'll just double click on Bike Writing 5 there. And I want to trim this one. I want to take it in a bit, let's say, right to there, and have the in point be trimmed there, and have the out point be trimmed right there. And now that this panel is active, I'm going to go File, Export, Media. And here it's going to say Entire Clip again, but this time I want to have it be clipped from the in and out points. And there they are right there. This time I'm going to do AVI instead of the other two formats we've used. Go to AVI. If you look at the drop-down list, there is no HD format. If I go to widescreen, it's going to have these little bars along the edge here, but I want it to be HD. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to override this. But I'm going to go down here to video codec, and if I choose DVNTSC, I can't change the width and height. But if I change this to uncompressed, now I can. So I'm going to go down here and change this. I'm going to unlink this. I'm going to go 1920 by 1080. I'm going to override the settings for AVI here. And now look at it. It's got some funny little bars. That's because it's not at the proper square pixels. So I'm going to go down here a little ways farther. And it says the aspect ratio right now is set to widescreen. I don't want that. I want square pixels. And there we go. Now we've got HD AVI file where we've really made some adaptations here. I could save this if I wanted to and call this one AVI HD. That'll be available the next time we look at this one here. It's going to be right there at the top. So now we're ready to put that in the queue. There we go. When you're ready to transcode, you go to the media encoder. There are these three guys ready to be transcoded. If you want to change the export formats here, you can. You can click over here and change them to something else. If you want to change the file names and locations, you can also do that as well. But once you're ready to go, you click this little play button, which is called the Start Queue. When you do that, it's going to start encoding these guys. And it gives you a progress report down here as it goes along. Some go quickly, some take longer. It just depends on the quality of the transcoding. If it's a high quality transcode, then it really has to work hard. If it does two passes, then it does one pass, then another pass, so it takes a while to do that as well. But at this point, you might have a whole lot of clips inside your encoding, and you can step out and get a coffee and then come back later and see that they've all been encoded. So I'll pause this, and we'll come back in a moment. And now we're all done. To create the H.264 file of the sequence, took two minutes, and the one little video clip, the MOV file, that took about a minute, and then the other video clip for AVI, uncompressed, that's just 10 seconds. The less compression you do, the faster it takes to make the file. Let's just take a look at those files now. So I imported those three files here into Premiere. Let's just take a look at them one at a time. Here's the original. And the one on the left is the one we exported to H.264. All things considered, since this is a compressed file, the quality is almost as good as the original. The quality of the MOV file, you can see how that changed pretty dramatically there. We'll take a look at the uncompressed AVI HD shot compared to the one here at the end. I think it, we're talking basically the same here. It looks pretty good, I think. So the uncompressed AVI essentially looks the same, which of course you'd expect with an uncompressed file. If you look at the three files here based on their length, the bike riding clip is the shortest, but it's more than one and a half gigabytes just for that one uncompressed file. If you look at the MOV file, it is almost three times as long as the other one, yet it's shorter by half. So the MOV file compression is not as good in this particular case as the MP4 compression, and the MP4 compression looked better. So as I mentioned earlier, H.264 might become your export format of choice. And if you choose variable bitrate and two pass, you'll get an even better looking file. So I hope that gives you a basic sense of how to export your sequences, clips from the project panel, and trim clips from the program monitor here inside Premiere Pro.